On today's episode of COVID in the Brain, we will be taking a closer look into the specific mechanisms that play a role in how the COVID-19 virus infects the brain. Here we've included a brief outline of what's going to be discussed in this video. We're going to be breaking down some complicated terms and concepts, so you can refer back to this image to see how the video progresses and go back to refreshers for more information if needed. Please visit the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel for part one. Well, before we take a closer look at the mechanism that scientists have hypothesized based off of current research available, let's quickly refresh our brains on the anatomy of our brain. Remember that the nervous system is divided into two main networks that work in harmony. The first is the central nervous system, which is made up of your brain and spinal cord. The second is your peripheral nervous system, which is essentially the nerves that come out of your central nervous system. The central nervous system, or CNS, basically integrates and makes sense of the sensory information that the peripheral nervous system, or PNS, collects from all over the body. It's the brain that sorts out all that sensory information and gives orders, carrying out all the complex functions such as thinking and remembering. No matter what part of the nervous system we're talking about, they're all made mainly of nervous tissue, which is densely packed with cells. Neurons are nerve cells which respond to stimuli and transmit a signal. These nerve cells are surrounded and protected by neuroglia or glial cells, which come in different forms mentioned on the slide. The blood-brain barrier is a complex that surrounds most of the blood vessels in the brain, acting as a barrier between the bloodstream and the extracellular space of the brain. The central components of the blood-brain barrier are endothelial cells that line all blood vessels. It allows certain substances, such as water and oxygen, to easily cross from the blood into the brain while preventing toxins and pathogens from crossing. The soma, or cell body, is the neuron's life support. The branch-like projections from the soma are known as dendrites. They pick up messages and convey that information to the cell body. The neuron's axon is like the talker. The long extension transmits electrical impulses away from the cell to other cells. In order to relay all of these messages and information to the rest of the body, neurons must communicate with each other. They both talk to one another using both electrical and chemical signals. Messages start as electrical signals traveling rapidly down the neuron, known as action potentials. When they reach the gap between two neurons, the messages need some help to get across. The information is transformed from an action potential to a chemical message crossing this gap known as the synapse. The release of these messages can trigger other action potentials on other neurons to convey the message onward. Pause to take a quick look at some terms and concepts that will be mentioned in this video. So how does our body get affected by this virus? There are two important terms to know, inflammation and infection. Infection is essentially when a host organism's bodily tissue is attacked by disease-causing microorganisms, such as bacteria, viruses, or fungi. The host, such as the human body, can fight this infection using our immune system. Next is inflammation. Inflammation is one way our body actually responds to infection. The classic signs of inflammation are pain, heat, redness, swelling, and the loss of function. It's our body's attempt to protect itself and remove the dangerous microorganism. There are many different ways that COVID-19 can enter the body and infect the brain, one of which is through the olfactory pathway, which is the system that perceives smell. The olfactory pathway connects from the nose to the brain, where special sensory information related to smell is relayed. COVID-19 first enters the body through the nose and enters inside the nose, known as the nasal cavity. It then infects the lining of the nasal cavity, known as the nasal mucosa. The nasal mucosa helps keep the nose moist and acts as a barrier to prevent infections and bacteria from entering the nose. Once the virus has infected the nasal mucosa, it further infects the olfactory mucosa, which is a lining located in the upper region of the nasal cavity. The olfactory mucosa is made up of olfactory epithelium, which is the site where specialized organs recognize smell. The virus then infects the olfactory nerve receptors, 
where small particles come in contact with neurons. Lastly, the virus infects the olfactory bulbs that send information to different parts of the brain. This is how the virus enters the brain, specifically the central nervous system, by infecting olfactory bulbs. Once the COVID-19 virus has entered the central nervous system, it infects the nerves of the peripheral nervous system that connect the brain and the spinal cord to the rest of the body. The infection then spreads to a cluster of cells in the spinal cord, which is responsible for communicating messages to the central nervous system. Lastly, the virus ends up in the lower part of the brain, which is connected by the spinal cord. The pons, cerebellum, and medulla are all infected by the virus in the lower part of the brain. Pons serves as a bridge between various parts of the nervous system. The cerebellum is responsible for voluntary movements such as balance, speech, and posture, whereas the medulla is responsible for involuntary functions such as breathing, swallowing, and heart rate. Thus, through this pathway, the virus enters the brain and infects different regions, resulting in more severe complications such as inflammation in the brain. COVID-19 inflammatory actions can be categorized into two parts, alteration of and passage through the blood-brain barrier, and increased levels and dysfunction of our blood flow through the brain. Here we have our COVID-19 virus. Now, in this image, the thing that we want to focus on is the objects that are sticking out of the sides of the virus, which is our spike protein. Spike proteins sit on the surface of the virus and allow it to bind and enter other cells. Specifically, in recent studies, researchers have recorded that the spike protein on COVID-19 triggers a pro-inflammatory response on endothelial cells that make up the blood-brain barrier. When we're looking at the diagram on the page, we can see on the left side is our astrocyte and our blood vessel, which are connected. This is what makes up our blood-brain barrier. Reminder, this is also the system that controls what contents can move from our blood system into our brain. To get a closer look, why don't we move over to the right image. Here we can see the virus is present in our blood vessel. And in response to this, our endothelial cells release pro-inflammatory factors, which are called cytokines. This pro-inflammatory response is a bit of a double-edged sword. Although it's released in order to destroy the virus, it also causes cellular damage and decreases the integrity of our blood-brain barrier. Ultimately, it's this response which researchers have shown enables COVID-19 to invade our central nervous system. Moving on to part two of our mechanism, it's been confirmed by multiple research studies that COVID-19 binds to and increases the levels of the molecule ACE2. ACE2 is responsible for converting the vasodilator angiotensin II into its active form. In its active form, angiotensin is a vasodilator, which means it stimulates blood vessels to expand and its purpose is to lower blood pressure. Below I've attached a link with an in-depth explanation of the angiotensin pathway if you're curious to learn more. Now, ACE2 is also present in cerebral vasculature, or the blood vessels in the brain which means that it can be found in our brains and nervous system. Overall, these mechanisms create a pathway for COVID-19 to enter our brain and spinal cord and cause dysfunction of blood flow. This dysfunction is what causes the neurological symptoms discussed in our previous video. The brain is a very complicated organ, and it's not understood how COVID-19 specifically causes the observed disorders, such as loss of taste and smell, but Several case studies have recorded the presence of COVID-19 as well as increased levels of ACE2 in the brain tissues of patients after death. This provides hard evidence for the mechanisms we just discussed. This mechanism is just one of the many various hypotheses scientists have on how COVID affects the brain. Researchers are working hard to understand how this virus can have such severe effects on different organs in the human body. The neurological complications associated with this virus are not new. Scientists have seen these with SARS and MERS. However, 
the significant increase in affected patients and the range in manifestations of these complications makes it very difficult to control and assess. Improving the understanding of the neurobiology of COVID-19 could not only help us better understand the true effects of this virus, but also other neurological disorders with potential virus associations, such as multiple sclerosis and viral encephalitis. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to tune into the YouTube channel for more content.